Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are going to be running the Ford F750 up against the Chevy Apache 6x6. Now, I'm really excited to do this battle, and I've been wanting to do this battle for a while now because... I, for some reason, find a lot of people comparing the Apache to the 750 in the comment section of a lot of the Apache videos, and for that reason, I wanted to kind of compare them side by side on the same map in the same conditions and see which one comes out on top. Now, obviously, we are going to be using fully built versions of both of these trucks, and that means for the F750, that is going to mean the big engine, the biggest tires, all of that good stuff. So, the HET 10V 6.6, the, let's see, custom gearbox, the tuned custom suspension, and of course, how could we forget, the 45-inch UOD3 tires. Well, we could do, could do UOD2. The UOD3 is wider, though. I think I'm going to go with the UOD3, just because it is the top tire in that class. So, or, well, I should say the top all-around tire in that class. So let's do the autonomous scout. And we'll do tall front-facing snorkel, engageable all-wheel drive, and we'll do pickup bed, custom pickup bed, and let's see, small roof rack and utility mount, because the other one is getting a full utility setup as well. So this thing is going to get a tremendous amount of utility support. And, okay, we've already got, like, we've already got the entire top of the thing set up. So, ooh, we're going to go to the Hunter Bumper. And we're going to go with the, eh, we'll go with the factory cab lights. And then the outrolled exhaust, well, eh, let's actually, you know what? Let's actually stick with the stock exhaust under the truck. I feel like it just might work a little better. And we'll paint this one red. And we'll throw beans on the dash because, of course, we're going to throw beans on the dash. And let's see. Freedom Bird, and take my winch, and let's see, let's see, your truck adventure, and oh god, we could do another one, jeez, no road, no problem, and uh, I guess no road, no problem again, so we've got a full sticker setup as well as being fully built. Now, we all know that the F750 with the biggest engine and the biggest tire option and all-wheel drive and all of that stuff, we all know that it is a really good package. However, I've never actually compared it side-by-side -side to the Apache, so this thing is running a, let's see, an A-minus power-to-weight ratio. Now, let's compare that to a fully-built Apache, because right now it's a C+. So, the fully-built F750 was an A-minus, and that's going to give us, let's see... So, whereas the F750 top engine was, gives us an A-minus power-to-weight ratio, the top engine in the Apache gives us a B+. Plus. So, it's actually pretty close. Now, since that one's got a balanced gearbox, for this, we're probably going to do a SnowRunner gearbox. And then we will do the 44-inch mud tires, which are, interestingly enough, not an option for the 750. Roof rack, trunk repair supplies, tall front-facing snorkel. Now, let's do the tow loops bumper in the rear, the, uh, let's not mess with that, and then in the front, we will do the, eh, we'll do, we'll do the heavy duty pipe bumper on this one, because the other truck's got a hunter bumper, so we might as well mix it up just a little bit, right? And as far as color goes on this one, the other one was, the other one's gonna be red, so we'll kind of give this one a cool, like, two-tone, two-tone with blue Throw beans in there on the dash, and we'll throw a couple stickers on here. I mean, nothing, nothing too crazy. Just a, just a little bit here and there. Yeah, that works. Just a little bit. So wait, oh, it went down to a B actually. So after we added a bunch of stuff, I'm guessing because we added all of the utility attachments, it went down to a B. So this, so the F750 would be an A minus, and this would be actually just a normal B, not a B plus. So, with that being said, let's get both of these trucks over to the testing zone. And we will we will forcibly encourage the Chevy Apache to come with us. Alright, so let's go ahead and disconnect the Apache. And we will attempt to climb this hill in high. Let's see how she does. I'm flat out. She goes up the hill, no problem. And rolls over. 
just to go ahead and flip us back over. You know, should we need it? Should either of these trucks need to be flipped over or rescued in any way? We have this thing just in case. And let's give it a go. Now, obviously, it's not as fast in high as the 750 is, nor is it as loud, which is interesting. But if I remember correctly, the hill climbing ability was pretty dang good. So, oh, yeah. Doesn't really even have to worry about it at all. And because high in this truck is actually still a pretty, you know, pretty short gear ratio, you can modulate the throttle a good bit, even when this truck is in high, and not really have to worry about it. So now let's get back in the normal F750, and we will once again encourage the Chevy Apache to come with us by hooking up the winch cable, and we will be out of here. Yeah, you. this thing definitely is driving like it has weight behind it. It's not like it doesn't have any weight. Not like it doesn't have any weight at all. I mean, it's it's got something there for sure. And now that we're out here near the mud, I'll go ahead and drop off the Apache and throw the 750 into the mud in high. Now, this is actually an area where the Apache could potentially have an advantage over the 750 because the 750 only has generic off-road tires and not mud tires, right? However, the 750 is holding its own no problem, holding its own just fine in the shallower mud and in the shallower stuff, and it seems to be a very, very, very capable vehicle. So now, I'm going to actually take it into the first mud lane in the deeper mud, and we'll see how it does in there in high. Will it be able to keep its momentum? A little bit of it, but not really. We kind of have to put it all the way down into low. We can run low plus, which if you sort of adjust the steering from side to side a little bit, it will still walk through there pretty quickly in low plus, which is pretty dang impressive, I actually have to say. And now that we're going to move over to the next mud pit, this is where things could really get interesting. Now, I'm going to run it in low here, and as you can see, it's definitely starting to push a little bit. It's definitely starting to have a little bit of wheel spin issues, and it's starting to feel like this could be a level that it doesn't really want to go much further past. However, oh, that's, yep. Ooh, even in low... Even in low, dude, that, that's, that's struggling. That's actually struggling pretty good. And I've got to give it the, uh, I got to give it credit though for, for moving out and moving through there. You know, I mean, I've got to give it credit where credit is due. Now it's going to be the turn of the Apache and we're going to compare the mud performance of the Apache to the mud performance of the F750. Now let's see if it'll go back up into low plus. It kind of will. It's not, I don't know if it fully... There we go. I don't know if it's like fully good with that, but we'll go back to the Apache 6x6 now. Fire it up. Throw it in high. And we'll get the little mod tools menu off the screen. And oddly enough, in high, this actually spins more on the mud tires in the same mud than the F750 does in the same mud on a generic off-road tire and not a dedicated mud tire in the same gear. So with a more powerful engine even, the 750 is able to have less wheel spin and I find that very, very interesting because these tires are, you know, near super swamper levels of, or at least they look like they should be near super swamper levels of grip, but it doesn't seem like they are. And you guys that watched my initial video on the Apache know how it performs in the deeper mud, but for those of you that haven't, we're about to head, and look at that, no change in actual vehicle speed between high range and low range. Even though the wheel speed changed a lot, the vehicle speed didn't change really whatsoever. So now we're going to plunge it into the deeper mud, and as you'll be able to see very quickly and very clearly, we won't even need to go to the second mud hole uh, for you guys to know that the Apache is not necessarily as good in the mud as the 750 is. Now, granted, it is still moving, but it's not moving anywhere close to the same pace. Now, keep in mind, the 750 was able to manage low plus in here, but if you put this thing in low plus, the speed does not change. The only thing that actually changes is the amount of wheel spin that you have. Now, next, I'm going to take it into the second mud hole, and the second mud hole is really going to tear this thing up. It's really going to tear it up and we are probably going to have to use the F750 to pull it out because as you can see, 
we're already spinning it in standard low. We're not even in low plus, and it is genuinely starting to spin, and there's very little that it can actually do. I mean, it's still moving, but when it gets a little bit further on out here, it will slow down. Easy. Okay, well, actually, this is the first spot where the Apache is sort of pulling ahead of the performance of the 750. Now, is it going faster? Maybe, but but only by a little bit. But the, the amount of grip, I've got to say, is now better uh, in the deeper stuff for whatever reason than it was in the 750. The 750 started to spin in there. But the weird thing about that is the 750 was faster everywhere else. So it's definitely an odd, uh, an odd comparison dynamic there. However, I think that this next test, which is the dip test, will be actually where the 7, not the 750, but the Apache could potentially claw back some, um, some support here. Now, since the 750 is so long, you can see how easy it is for it to get hung up here. And you really have to go diagonally through obstacles like this in the 750. And I mean, I'm really having to work at not getting it stuck there we go and then you have to back up and there's all sorts of great and wonderful things and great wonderful steps that you have to do in order to not high center the 750 whereas the apache could just plow its way right through here no problem now is that a bad thing or sort of a does that take away from the 750 i don't think it takes away from it but it definitely shows an area in which the Apache does actually outperform it, which is interesting to me because I think a lot of people find themselves saying that the Apache is useless, but there are areas like this where the Apache will outperform the F750. There just aren't that many scenarios where you run into a, uh, a situation like this in the game. So I think we're actually in a position right now where we might be... Yeah, we may be beached. We had to winch. See if it'll even do it in high. It'll attempt. Oh, it'll try to stall out. It'll attempt to, and then it'll try and stall out. But look, there's not even remotely enough uh, space in between the first and second sets of wheels for this thing to even remotely high center in here. You could just drive it straight. And that is a really nice advantage to have. The only problem with that is you won't really encounter this type of obstacle all that much in the career maps. So, it's not like it's going to be something that you need need, but when you do need it, it's definitely a very nice ability to have to be able to drive through something like that just, like, straight on and not really even worry about it. And now, we are going to finish up with what is arguably my favorite test, and that is the bridge jump test. Now, y'all, if you've been around the channel for a while... You know all about the bridge jump test. The bridge jump test is a favorite around here. And when I forget to do the bridge jump test, y'all absolutely always remind me. So I, I've, I've made sure to be aware of that whenever I bring vehicles out here to test them. Because as far as I'm concerned, the bridge jump test has sort of been a staple of almost any kind of, of, of proving ground testing that we do here on my channel. And that is, you know, it's, it's actually really cool that it's sort of become like a staple of that. Because if I forget to do a bridge jump test, dude, everybody in the comments is like, why didn't you jump the bridge? And I'm like, I am so sorry. I legitimately, there are a couple times where I've legitimately forgotten to do one. And then I didn't realize until after people started telling me in the comments. And I was like, you know what? I need to make sure that these bridge jumps always remain. You know what I mean? So, I'm going to actually throw it in high, even though it'll go just a tiny... Well, actually, it didn't really change in speed all that much at all. That horn just cracks me up. It's like, big oof, bud. But we are going to jump the 750 first, and then the Apache after. And once these trucks get to top speed... So, the formula is going to be automatic to high, back to automatic, and then into neutral. Now, you may ask yourself, why automatic and then high? Well, actually, they'll leave that in automatic because why? You may ask yourself, why neutral? Neutral because it'll actually speed up when you're going downhill if you put it in neutral! So, almost to the barrels. It was like right about here, right about to that last stick, or like that last pole. 
I'm gonna back it up. Hopefully the Apache can clear this. I know the Apache's slow, but you know what? Actually, because I'm trying to, because that one only has one gearbox option and this thing has multiple, I don't consider this cheating. So we'll throw a highway box and we'll run it in automatic mode with the highway box. That's fifth. Come on, we're sixth. There's, wow, it finally went to sixth. Not a neutral. Oh my God, it slowed down. And then kick the clutch, fourth gear, fifth gear. Interior view so it doesn't jump out. Flat out. There's sixth gear. Winding up, gaining speed, and oh, oh. Well, I think that settles the jump test. Yikes. But if you guys enjoyed this test and enjoyed this comparison, make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys next time.